going on everyone? Robert from the Remote Control here, and tonight we're going to take a look at the newly released Star Wars Rogue One trailer. Now, as most of you probably know, I was pretty upset with Lucasfilm and Disney after they kind of bamboozled us back in July, stating, oh, we got new footage to show during the weekend of Star Wars Celebration on ABC, everybody tune in, blah, blah, blah. And unfortunately, if anybody was watching the live stream of Celebration, we saw, what, maybe two scenes that were different than what we saw from Star Wars Celebration. I was a little upset about that. But they've kind of tried to make it right. I don't know if this was planned ahead of time to show it now. It's a little bit sooner than when they showed the Force Awakens trailer last year when they did that in October. So maybe they're trying to play a little catch up here or, you know, apologize to the fans that were upset about July. But either way, we finally got our first full length trailer here. Now, first off, the trailer is spectacular. Um, definitely hits the beats that I was hoping it would hit, showing the, the war, showing that, you know, it, it's not the Skywalker saga and I think that's a big point a, a big thing that they need to do because there's a lot of people I think still even at this point who are going to be confused going into seeing this movie especially the non-hardcore fans or die-hard fans of the franchise uh, you know they, they they've pretty much hit the same uh, theme that they hit with the teaser trailer uh, that was released not long ago uh, we know um, Jen or so, you know, she obviously was arrested and was was held captive for some reason, being that she was, you know, a thief or, you know, whatever it was. We were not 100% sure on that yet, but again, they're showing that they're bringing her in and most likely offering her, you know, a chance to not be held captive any longer, uh, doing a mission for the Rebellion. Uh, we get some more... Mon Mothma, uh, which is exciting, uh, and we get really a, a good look at the um, the world. I mean, it's it feels grittier than other Star Wars films have. It definitely feels like there is a war, and I think that's exactly what they wanted to go with. Uh, when they brought Gareth Edwards in, they wanted to to have a war movie, something that was different from what we've seen before. And again, there's all this uh, worry that, you know, with the reshoots and the re-editing and so on and so forth, that it was too gritty. Maybe that's the case. Maybe they're trying to make it a little lighter, make it a little more like The Force Awakens. However, I personally want to see something different than what we saw in The Force Awakens. Will we get that? Maybe. Maybe not. But either way, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play the video, and you're going to go through it with me. I'm going to just point out some things. I'm sure you guys have seen it already multiple times if you're like me. Uh, if not, you know, just enjoy it, and all right, let's get this going. <clears throat> the shot of the city there. Nice shot. Again, our Jenner or so. Ah, oh, this shot here of the Star Destroyer. It, it, it's not a shot we've ever seen before. We've never seen a Star Destroyer in the atmosphere. It's always been in space. And here they're offering her the mission. Again, they are re-showing this shot of the dish being put onto the Death Star. If you're really doing this, I want to help. Good. Good. I've been recruiting. Again, we're we're seeing this world that we've never seen before of rebels, you know, held held captive and. You know, just this gritty feel. This is my favorite line here. I mean, he's... The, we're not going to have Jedi in it, but the Force, as they've said, is going to be felt throughout the the film. Alan Tudyk's character there. Nice shot of the Death Star like that. Kind of reminiscent of what the original concept of the Death Star... Well, not the original concept, but some of the early concept of the Death Star was with the satellite actually near the bottom. Again, the, the beach scene they showed there. It, it, it feels gritty. It feels a lot darker. We got our, our X-wings there, and in this shot, 
I mean, we've never seen anything like that. It, that's what this movie is bringing. It's something we've never seen before. And that's what we need with, with Star Wars. That, that, that scene there with the TIE fighter flying up kind of reminded me of a video game, kind of like The Force Unleashed. Uh, you know, is she walking towards that? And then the, the final shot, Darth Vader, obviously. Um, I, I mean, it's definitely going to be an exciting movie. Uh, personally, I think that, um, you know, it, it, it's, is it going to do as well as The Force Awakens? Probably not, because I think, again, people are going to be a little confused. Where's Rey? Where's Finn? Where's, you know, uh, Luke Skywalker? So on and so forth. But I think this movie is going to do fantastic. I think it is going to be fantastic. I just think Lucasfilm and Disney hasn't ha handled the marketing for it perfectly. The trailer, by no means, is, is perfect. There were some things throughout there that, you know, I felt a little out of place, uh, some of the dialogue and such. But overall, it's a solid trailer. Again, it's it's showing us what we need to see. It's showing those fans who are not hardcore that this is not the Skywalker film or um, story. That this is completely different. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, obviously, Darth Vader showing at the end was huge. Again, we've already known that he was going to be in the film, and again, we had glimpses of the leaked trailer that was shown at Star Wars Celebration uh, that, again, showed Vader. And I, it was, a, if I'm not mistaken, almost the exact same scene or the same image of Vader with his breathing there. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, you guys got to, you know, th throw me you know a comment down below. Let me know what you think of it. I, I'm overly excited for this, probably more than I should be. Uh, but again, I think it's going to be an excellent film. I think it's going to be one that definitely takes... Star Wars in a different direction, in a better direction. Not saying that The Force Awakens wasn't the, the right direction, because I love The Force Awakens. But I think we need something completely different, and I think this is definitely the way to go with it. Uh, who knows if they're going to continue this trend in the Han Solo spinoff or solo film uh, that they're coming out with. Um, and then obviously the third uh, Star Wars story film, which... Again, is still rumored to either be Obi-Wan or Boba Fett or something like that. Either way, we I, I think they need to go in that direction of this gritty show the war that we've not really seen before. Uh, you know, that's my biggest quarrel with the prequels. You know, we well, they build up the Clone War in Episode Two, and then we see the end of it in Episode Three. Uh, they talk about it in Episode Four, and we don't really see. A war go on. We know that there was a war. We know that there were wars, but we have not seen the war happen. And that's what I would love to see these Star Wars story films be, is us seeing the war or wars happen. So, again, throw some comments down below. Follow me on Twitter, uh, at The Remote Control. Um, you know, definitely just keep in touch. Let me know what you think if you like this video. If not, I'm looking for any kind of feedback at all. If you hated it, whatever. If you did, if you liked it, awesome, let me know. And if you did, honestly, if you hated it, tell me what you didn't like about it because I'm looking to fix things. I know that, um, you know, everybody does these reaction and review and, and things, but, you know, I, I, I want to try and do it my, my own thing here. Uh, and with that, you know, just throw some comments down below. Anyways, uh, this has been Robert from The Remote Control, and I will talk to you guys later.